All right, greetings, geeks, and welcome to another video here on the Wizards, the Podcast Guide to Comics YouTube channel. You know, we've promised you an array of different content, so this time we decided to give you something at random. Just how random? Well, we're going to do a long box dive here, okay? So basically, we are going to reach blindly into one of our many long boxes of 90s comics, and we will reach in and see what comes out and tell a little bit of the story <laughs> about where that came from, where we got it, if there is such a story to be told. So, Michael, why don't you kick it off? Sure. So I'm calling this segment Long Box Roulette. I, I, I have a little bit of a confession. So I do label my boxes some sort of obscure naming convention. And I grab one box that just says classic Marvel, classic DC. I don't know what's in it. I don't even know what year they are. I just grabbed it and said, okay, let's see what happens. So I'm, gonna, I'm not even going to look. I'm just going to reach down and see what's the first thing I pull out. Huh. Something we talked about on this show. Oh. Hey! <laughs> we love those 30th anniversary hologram covers. So, when I started thinking about this particular series of books, and I have all four of them, I had copies of them years ago as a kid, and for some reason or other, they vanished. A, a, a good buddy of mine, my, my, my buddy Mike, who lives in New Jersey, he was going through his garage and he had a box full of comics and he said, here, you have them. And in it was all four of these, never read, never opened, you know, just sealed them in their, you know, poly bag sleeve. And this was one of them. I just happened to grab it. Um, Let's do a couple of them. So I got it. So go ahead. You go and we'll see what else. Is All there. right. I will tell you, this is my Marvel long box, which is right next to me here. So I'm sure to find something from the house of ideas. Let's see what we get. <laughs> house of ideas. I like that. All right. So what we have here, it's so white. It's a blizzard. So this is the amazing Spider-Man. Okay. But if you'll notice the costume here, who is that, Michael? Isn't that uh, Ben Riley's costume? Yes. Yeah. Ben Riley's Spider Man here. So, this was part of after he came out in the Sensational Spider Man, mm. you know, so he got his own title. In I almost thought it was going to be like Avenging Spider Man or one of those titles, too. And, and from a distance, it looks almost like it could be Amazing Spider Girl, which is the, you know. Yeah. You know, I think his name is like Mayday Parker or whatever. Yeah. yeah. I, cool. I, I do have plenty of Spider Girl comics too, but yeah. So this was an interesting storyline that involved Mysterio. Okay. And Mysterio got like an update where he had he didn't have the fishbowl anymore. Okay. He just kind of had this green like flame head sort of. Oh, okay. This storyline totally ripped off Batman Forever because Mysterio basically set up a TV station in New York and everybody got their boxes so they could tune into his. Mysterio I vision. I remember this storyline. Yeah. Oh, wow. I do remember that. Because they kind of like nuanced it a few times in different things here and there. Where the, and I'm like, they're just copying Batman Forever. A hundred percent. Yeah. <laughs> cool cover though. I like that cover. That's pretty neat. Now, why was he in the snow? Do you know? Do you remember why he was in the snow? Well, I think that was just, they're calling it a media blizzard. And I think if I remember correctly, the story, like, because even on the back, I have like the next installment of that mm -hmm. story and it's snowing. I'm pretty sure the idea was like that it was a blizzard. People were stuck mm. indoors watching TV type thing. Oh, you know? uh, okay. So it's kind of meta. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Let's see. What's next? Eyes closed, not looking. And I'm going to go with this. Oops, I pulled that. Ooh. This is interesting. Hey, cool. This is a cool one. Wow. Now, I pronounce the villain's name because I, I always had a problem with that as a kid, seeing the action figure by Toy Biz and seeing him in comics. Isn't it pronounced Annihilus? I'm pretty sure. I always called him Anhilius, <laughs> <laughs> which is there's not <laughs> next to either. 
it almost looks like something else. <laughs> um, so, okay, this is another one where I, you know, I actually went and went on a little bit of a, a, a of a Fantastic Four bender a couple of years ago, and I was buying up on eBay a ton of you know, Hickman run of Fantastic Four. And this just happened to be in one of the stacks. And because it's so old, I never even opened it. I haven't read it. I haven't read it. I, I just, I saw it. I was like, oh, I like this cover. I, I love the what if stuff. And I was like, you know what? I'm just going to preserve it and protect it. Um, want me to open it right now? Yeah, well, you could, yeah, flip through it there. I, I mean, because for me, the what if comics, like I have number one. Do you really? Like, what if Spider-Man joined the Fantastic Four? And they did the Fantastic Four stories a, a lot. lot. What yeah. If. yeah, there were so many possibilities there, whether it was like, what if their, you know, child had lived and all this other stuff. So this it was isn't like, even that old. This is Terminator, this Terminator 2, Judgment Day on the back of it. That's pretty funny. Um, this is cool. Oh, wow. This is pretty neat. The art is pretty nice. See, like, I mean, you you know I love, like, the Elseworld stuff in DC, so I, yeah. I love the idea of, like, the what-if stories, and I'm really... Hey, I, there's some good Marvel t-shirts right there. Ooh, look at these guys. Yeah. I actually did a whole article once just scanning all the variations of the t-shirt ads. I may have to post that to social media so you can see That's it. That's pretty cool. Why does Spider-Man wear a backpack? Like... <laughs> got a backpack on the whole, the whole I guess comic. If he doesn't want to leave his clothes under a ledge somewhere. He brings the backpack. I, I, I guess so. I guess so. This is pretty cool. The, the art is really, really nice. Interesting. Also, right. I'll give the sniff test, too. There we go. Like. Smells like musty paper. All right. <laughs> it passes the test. It passes it's the test. Cool. What do you got? What is, what's your next All right. One? Here we go again. Over here. I'm going to reach way in the back. I'm going to reach in the back, see what we got. Oh, now check this out. So this is an issue of Marvel Age magazine. But there's something special about here because we have the X-Men, right? But yeah. there's something special about these X-Men. These are the animated pride of the X-Men. That pilot right. that never got picked up. That's what this is, issue is all about. And inside it has like a preview of like the whole series. Even on the back here, there was like the following, they did another one where That's they were like cool. really covering it. And the cool thing about this, I recall, is that they actually talk about how, you know, the pilot didn't get picked up. So they're releasing the pilot as a graphic novel, but it's taken stills from the animated series and then turned it into a graphic novel and put the word balloons in. That's cool. So if anybody out there has that, I'd be very curious to know because I've always wanted to pick it up because it's just like, it's a cartoon, but it, you know, it, they always redraw the cartoons, right? In the Marvel comics. Even yeah. They did like the cats or whatever else. They're adapting a TV episode, but it was slightly different. Mm -hmm. This was literally stills from the, you know, the pilot. So, mm -hmm. hey, but yeah, if anybody uh, enjoys that out there, I know a lot of us just waited. Is the Pride of the X-Men going to come on again? And then we went to the arcade. We're like, it's the Pride of the X-Men. This is <laughs> I actually really like that look of Kitty Pride, like the, the design, the drawing of her. Yeah. That was one of my favorite looks of hers, you know, for m much of the, my, you know, history of comic books. Do one more each. I want to see if I, what else I can find. All right, yeah. let's, let's see. Let close my eyes. I don't know where I'm grabbing. Ooh. Huh? You're going to like this one. Okay. Exo Man of War, Exo Man of War. Oh, cool. <laughs> I can't believe you have that, and I don't have that yet. I've looked at it before. I've never bought it. Wow. This did one. Did too, or did you buy that? No, someone gave me this. Oh. Yeah. Um, it was another case of, like, you know, somebody was throwing away their comics, and they're like, I think it was actually one of my uncles, or relatives or something like hey our, you know our neighbor was getting rid of comics here's a here's a stack of comics you want them and i was like sure i didn't even look at them i just took them and i was like this is awesome <laughs> yeah this is 
I'm really happy. I forgot I even had this. This is pretty cool. Yeah, that's great. I've always wanted to read it. I've just been curious. Yeah, what did they leave in? You know, because there were a lot of deleted scenes like we discussed yeah. a long time ago. So the never before seen comics adaptation. Dun dun dun. <laughs> That's pretty cool. All right, last one for me here. Let's see what comes out. All right. Dig it around, dig it around. Oh, okay. So we got a little bit of Dark Hawk here. Ooh, interesting. That sticker stamp there, $2. Uh, maybe I paid $2 for this. <laughs> so with Dark Hawk, here's what happened. Um, I, I've talked about it before. There's this used bookstore called Bookman's that yes. I would go to. And so they like used to have this huge comics rack, and, you know, get them for 50 cents a piece or whatever. And occasionally somebody would sell their entire run of books. Mm -hmm. so that's what I did there is like, I remember going through and just like trying to, it's like they would mix them around, you know, they didn't just put them all in one place. So you had to go searching literally through every book. And so I would just like grab every copy of Dark Hawk that I could find. Oh, wow. And, I wanted to get the whole story. This is part of like the later issues. His uh, costume changed a little bit. It like morphed and mm -hmm. kind of changed. But um, yeah, Dark Hawk for me is one of those characters where I'm just like, really? They haven't introduced him yet in any form of Marvel media. No. Waiting. It feels like he's that kind of undiscovered character that is ripe to be like the next Guardians of the Galaxy, right? He's like, right. oh, he's like, you didn't know about him? He could be very cool if you get the right actor to play yeah. him. Yeah. I mean... And, and they're doing so many things with Disney Plus right now. Like they could, they could easily make that into a mini series, even if it's standalone. I mean, they're doing Moon Knight for goodness sakes. I mean, like that could be an easily, easily translatable mini series television show. Yeah. Well, that was fun, man. The I actually want to show you one more thing. Oh, what'd you find? This is not a comic, but it's something very, very important to me. So. As you guys all know, I'm a huge Batman 89 fan. And growing up, I had a particular Batman shirt that I got back then. And for years and years, I've been trying to find that shirt again and reclaim it. Obviously, I was seven years old and my seven-year-old self wouldn't fit in. A, you know, that shirt would not fit me these days. But I actually touched base with a, a friend of the show. His Instagram handle is Dork Knights, and he helped me find on eBay a particular Batman shirt. I still have it in the bag. This was literally the exact version of the shirt that I have, but an adult size. Yeah. I actually have a remade version of this, which is reversible, that has the Joker on the inside. Whoa. This one even has the tags on it, and it says JC Penny's $14. And I recently reclaimed it, and I what I'm going to do, because I'm such a nerd, I'm never going to wear this shirt because <laughs> you know it's 30 plus years old. But I'm gonna get like one of those Michael's shirt frameable things and pin yeah. it and frame it and put it like with other Batman 89 paraphernalia that I have and put it in the frame. And I just I've been dying to show this, and I felt like, okay, we're going through some vintage stuff. Let's show a vintage shirt as well. So That's awesome. Yeah, I just, I remember that summer when you walked into Sears or J.C. Oh, Penney or whoever, every, just like racks and racks, every type every, of Batman shirt, you shoes. Can imagine. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, awesome. No, it's pretty cool. So this was actually a lot of fun. I want to do this again more often. Like, I, I like this, you know, long box roulette because, as you guys know, I've got about, I don't know, 20 long boxes at this point and some of them have some old stuff in it that i don't even remember what's in there and it's fun to kind of like go down memory lane so we should definitely do this as you know more often if you like this kind of stuff let us know hit us up on twitter at wizards comics or on instagram at wizards underscore comics and you can follow us on our youtube channel now which is awesome which is super exciting and as adam has mentioned in previous episodes We've got some big stuff in store for you guys for the next coming months and into 2021. We've got a lot of Wizard Files plans coming up. We're going to be trying to do some really cool stuff in the near future. And I just realized we've, we haven't even celebrated our one-year anniversary of this show. It's true. We're, we're coming up on episode 25, and that was going to kind of be our big celebration. Yeah. But yeah. So high stay five, tuned for Michael. That. Did. A Woo. virtual high five. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, everybody, who's been such a support who's really 
been so excited, as excited yeah. as we are about doing the show, you have shared that, just bolstered it over yeah. and over again. So we're, we're glad we have such a cool community of listeners out there and now viewers here on yeah. YouTube. We hope exactly. we're uh, treating you right. But yeah, we're, the trade's not stopping. We got a long ways oh, to go. Wait. What, what did somebody tell us early on? They're like, <laughs> You know, there's like 700 issues of Wizards. You've got like nine and a half years of shows to produce. I'm like, Pretty oh, much. nine and a half years? Yeah. Oh, man. We are <laughs> committed. We are committed. That's should be committed. We should be committed. Yes, probably. <laughs> our, our wives would commit us for the amount of junk that we keep around. <laughs> it's not junk. It's priceless heirlooms. <laughs> Look at the head behind Adam. <laughs> I, I have a head to feed. Please listen to the show. Come yeah. on. I actually really like that little bit this display case to your right, I guess. That's pretty cool. Yeah, we got some vintage stuff. Uh, for those of you who are curious, just before we sign off here, so I got I got some random, you know, 80s, 90s action figures up here. But second shelf? That is my collection of Troop Beverly Hills VHS tapes from all around the world. I have every American release <laughs> of Troop Beverly Hills, including rental copies and so on. Plus, I've gone to places like England and Spain and all over the world to grab uh, Brazil, you know, so many different copies of that movie. So, now, if you love it, you love it. Will they play in, in a in a NTSC uh, VCR? The European ones are PAL, so right. they won't. But the Brazilian one is a VHS that I could actually put in there with the NTSC. Uh, oh, and I speak Portuguese, so for me, it's win-win. The more you know, folks. I didn't even wow. know you spoke Portuguese. Well, interesting. <laughs> so, as always, thank you guys so much for tuning in, listening to the show, being a part of our social environments and everything. And as always, Adam, take it away. Até mais. Ciao. Ah. <laughs> that was All good. right. Until next time, keep your books bagged and boarded. <laughs>